morning everybody hope you guys have had a wonderful second long weekend well that is if you connected anzac day with uh the rest of the weekend which i think a lot of people did even our kids school uh did that that put in a curriculum day on the friday so we had them at home for the last four days and my son has gone to camp this week uh year five camp uh grade five camp um, and he is away for the whole week, Monday to Friday. So that'll be interesting to hear the stories when he comes back home. So I thought today we'll have a little bit of a topic, a little bit of a funny one. Uh, it came about, um, well, it's not funny <laughs> when it happens, uh, but it came about when we um, were away recently in Queensland, uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the strategies and um and mindset that we put ourselves in when we realize we have lost some work or uh, some work has come into our onto our plate that we totally didn't anticipate that we would have to repeat or redo. So I'll share some stories from my own experience and also how um, how I deal with them, how some uh, some people deal with them, and how you can get through them without um, you know experiencing too much stress. Uh, but let me just do my little share in my couple of groups and then we can get started smack bang on 9 a.m. here Melbourne time. So I hope you've had a great um, weekend and, um, and really now I feel this next bit of the year has started after all of the Easter breaks and holidays and school holidays. Today is a clean uh, full week uh, that we have on board. All right, so I'm just going to do the share uh, into uh, the groups. Okay, here we go. Ultimate business support and, and then into the other group. Cool. Good morning, Viv, Adrian, and Andrula and Aru as well. Um, all right, guys, let's one more thing to do and we can get going with this. Here we go. Perfect. All right. So um, when we were away uh, recently uh, in Queensland, we're just chilling out, having our holidays. And um, uh, prior to going away, um, I had visited my accountant and I was at my pre-tax planning meeting, uh, you know, sorting out, you know, what to do, what to look out for and how to finish before June 30th. And um and he said, gee, Nat, you know, um, you guys have significantly grown in profit um, since the year before. I mean, uh, your advertising expenses are like a third of what they were the year before. Your travel expenses are down. I go, this doesn't make much sense. I mean, I expect for us to be more profitable than the year before because of some restructuring and, uh, to the model of the business and all that, stuff, but not quite so much. And there was discussions about um, a different type of, type of setup of the business, bucket companies and all this sort of stuff. Uh, and um, and I said, I don't know. I, I go, this, this doesn't seem right. So they go, okay, we'll look into uh, your, um, you know, your accounting because in the last 12 months we have changed two accounting systems from the old MYOB to the um, to Wave. And then when we had to obviously employ someone into the business, we couldn't use Wave, so we had to move across to zero. And that transition from uh, Wave to zero, apparently, what we found out was that when our uh, visa um, transactions got uh, moved across, they got moved across as, um, as uh, sorry, receive money versus spend money and vice versa. And of course, we have a lot more spend money versus receive money through a visa because a lot of our bills get paid through that particular account. And um, when that accountant obviously looked back and realized that was the case, he got back to us in the middle of our holiday and said, look, um, this is what's happened. This is where this extra money is coming uh, from. And you need to actually go into uh, zero and change one by one each transaction to be now spend money, um, versus not receive money, right? And my mum usually does my bookkeeping and accounting and all that, but I help her. Uh, I, I've been sort of training her up for the last 12 months. And I just looked at it. And thankfully, it was only uh, a July. It had fixed itself once it started using zero, but that uh, the transactions that were transferred across 
So it was just like, uh, okay, so we did all of this work to accept them and to reconcile them when we originally, it was a ton of work to do um, five months worth of transactions when we originally swapped into the system. Now we realized we had to scrape it all and start all over again. And I was just like looking at it and I go, oh my God, like that's so many transactions, like five months worth of stuff. And I, I swear to God, and we're in the middle of the holidays. And if you know me, if you know me, you would know that uh, I don't like to have anything pending or someone waiting for stuff, all that kind of stuff. And I just realized and I told my mom and we looked at each other and, and all we could do, I don't know about you, how you guys would react, you know, uh, a, a lot of people, well, that's the question. How do you react when you realize that you have lost uh, work? Like um, computer has crashed. Uh, maybe a file didn't get saved. I know Stuart has had many situations where um, he's been writing an awesome copy uh, or email to our database and all that kind of stuff and he's lost it. And then he goes, I could never redo that again. Um, you know, how do you react? Is it uh, anger? Is it frustration? Is it, what did I write here? Do you start to feel significant amounts of stress uh, starting to arise or is it laughter? Okay, so um, I think when she usually we call that a little bit of shit hits the fan moment, not a massive one, like life changing one. However, it's like you go through those emotions of denial, no, no, this is not happening, denial, anger, blame, depression, and acceptors and resurgence. Um, how quickly do you move through those um, emotions, right? And I, um, um, I very quickly nowadays know to just laugh it out just really laughed at it. I said to my mum, okay, let's pour ourselves a drink. Uh, well, actually, we first went away, to, I went to dinner and we kept laughing all throughout dinner, realising what we had to, uh, had to do. And I said, that's it. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to make ourselves some drinks. We're going to sit down. We're going to um, re-import everything and um, you're going to cross-check. I'm going to enter stuff because I'm faster on the computer and we'll just hang out and um, and get drunk and uh, and do this work. Uh, not very drunk, tipsy. I said, but that's how, how we're going to do it. And literally I said, oh, why don't we just do one month at a time? So I said, first of all, the goal was, okay, let's do one month at a time, five months, five days. We'll have it done when we need to do probably an hour or two at a time. And um, also what that made me realize is like, oh, my God, this is like when you buy IKEA furniture and, um, and uh, you do the whole uh, job. And actually we had this instance with Stuart, uh, our Lilo um, next to the pool, this new um, contraption outside that we carried across uh, when we were away. <laughs> Swear, breathe, replan my time, get on with it. <laughs> yeah, Helen. And so Stuart and I got to the last pole that had to be um, put in and we realised that the little uh, backs of the Lilos, which are meant to like go up and down, we're not doing that. And it was because one pole had not been put the right way and it would not work. We had to go all the way back to the beginning and there were this, hey Lucy, these screws that you couldn't, um, they were so hard on their hands to screw up and down. And, and I just got, kind of think, oh my God, in life there's so many times when we realise that we have to go all the way back. And like Helen said, is a replan the time and work out how we're going to get back to almost like, you know, two steps, uh, you know, two steps forward, three steps back, and now we're going to go forward again. And so at that situation as well, my reaction was like, yeah, again, like as you say, um, Helen, you have that moment of, oh, I can't believe this is happening. It's almost like, no, no, no this is not happening. And then, um, and then you... Um, replan and um and all i could do is just laugh whereas Stuart's reaction was like just hold the hold the anger and frustration i keep doing it i keep doing it um anyways um another another situation like that that i have with my authors and i know that a lot of my authors uh, watch these um uh, lives is that some of them sometimes may lose their audio recording um so they're recording their chapters um, you know, obviously they're doing stuff around their computers and all that kind of stuff and then they realise that they've lost one or more uh, audio recordings from their books. Um, and often there, because this is the first time they're writing their book and they're doing it in this 
uh, this way and some of them can be a lot more um, techy challenge than others you know it, it gets to them you know and, and I always say look just realize that that recording was never meant to be um, that next time you're gonna do it better so I want to give you um, a three-step um, solution to move around this um, uh, these kind of situations because they're going to pop um, into your life in whatever way whether you're building IKEA furniture You're doing accounting you're doing um, Stuff on your computer and your computer crashes and this is why I guess the solution around computer crashes or stuff is keep everything on the cloud Make sure that it's not just living on your computer. So nowadays with the ability for us to have things um saved in Dropbox and Google Drive and all that kind of stuff, um, you'd be crazy not to utilize those um, services which really give you that peace of mind that you're not going to lose all of your work. So, um, so ensure that you invest in something like that and you'll never look back because you will also be able to access it from any computer anywhere in the world and share files so quickly and so easily. So here's my little uh, three-step uh, three step. Um, strategy or process to go through um, and the benefits behind sometimes losing our work um, as to what they give us. So step number one is to reframe, okay, so to reframe, there is always a positive you get um, out of it and also the fact that it makes you wiser uh, in, for next time around. So reframe the situation, what does it mean? Uh, how can you look at it differently? How can you have a little bit of fun with it? Like mum and I, you know, having a few drinks um, and hanging out. Actually, you know, the outcome, what happened was we were going to do one day over five days of that uh, every month uh, for one day over five days. But um, that second afternoon after we did, we started the first month in the evening, the same day. And so we can just get used to how it was going to work. And then the following day, we basically just, once the kids went to bed, we said, okay, let's do one month now. Um, and and then um, and we'll do one month and once we did one and because oh that was fast let's do another one and by midnight that second night we had it all done and we said back to the account and they were super happy so um, we got it sort of off our plate but the, you never know how it actually the second time around nothing actually takes as long as it did the first time around so you're always a lot quicker and faster actually over the weekend we were um, playing this and you might want to look up this little app it's good for the brain it's called tricky um, and uh, Stuart myself and the kids uh, we're playing it, um, uh, you know, trying to work out these little solutions. It's almost like an IQ little app that we and we download it. Please don't buy the paid version. It's exactly the same as the free version. We thought Tricky 2 was going to be this new, um, uh, new, new puzzles and all that kind of stuff, and we bought it. And then when we opened it, it was the exact same version. So but get just get the free one and work with the free one. Um, it's a lot of fun and do it with a few people because uh, more heads together um, can help you solve them. But the point of this was um, that we would have to go back a few steps if we had uh, was killed, you know, you have lives and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the next time around when we'd had to solve um, the puzzles, uh, it was like dig, 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 so much faster. So always know that the next time around having to redo something, you definitely will be faster. So I guess the positive is, yeah, repetition is the mother of all skills. So reframe, step number one is to reframe the situation. How can you pull out what is positive within it? Uh, well, step number three what in here was, um, well, I'll give you number two. Number two was get to work, right? Um, uh, redone what has gone wrong, right? So just get to work like Helen said before, replan the time, um, get to it straight away and um, and just uh, just take take the lessons from it, which was step number three, learn and deepen your understanding of the thing or the system, right? For us, it was zero, right? And um, zero is a new platform that I'm not familiar with. I was using MYB for so many years and I used Waves. So I've been learning all this accounting and bookkeeping systems. And what I realized, by the end of it, actually um, making mis mistakes or do, uh, having errors in it, and try to figure out how to fix it and and how to uh, do, to do it better. Actually, it was in a way a form of training for myself and the ability to be able to navigate and problem solve the system. So it was actually really, really um, good good thing that happened uh, because I was able to figure out. 
uh, how to do things, how not to do it, and um, all throughout. And, and I learned a lot of problem solving around that particular accounting software that um, I, I feel empowered how to do it. Same thing when um, when I had my first employee uh, come in, like Viv, um, you know, didn't know how to pay her, how to do the super, how to, um, you know, extract the tax to put it on my bass and all that kind of stuff. But with this repetition over the last few months, um, you know, we've sat down and worked out and click here and click there. Uh, we've been able to figure it out. And that's one thing that I want to encourage a lot of people to do is actually um, go, um, you know, you uh, technology is, it can seem scary, but if you just go in and play, usually you can't do things uh, wrong. If you do, you can sort out how to problem solve around it. You can ask someone else and you can watch tutorial videos. The, the second segment of this particular live I wanted to cover off was um, uh, because I wanted to split this one into two, but I only put, um, put that particular title on there, was um, a little bit about this is the time of the year. We're coming sort of almost to mid-year and um, I want to go through and recap on some life and business uh, declutter um, things that you maybe want to look into so that um, you set yourself up uh, really well for that second half of the year. So we've talked a lot about in the past about decluttering uh, life business and I've got here a um, a list of 10 things you might want to pick from uh, to declutter. Why Why was this sort of in my mind? It's because over the Easter period, we spend an hour of power every single day, for, uh, Good Friday, Easter Saturday, Sunday, Monday, because we ended up being home after our Queensland holiday. We thought, well, how can we utilise our time best so we, when we do get busy after this uh, period that has just happened over the last three weeks, uh, we are all set. So we did a mini mission declutter where we, you know, we didn't order the skip and all that like we do just um, early December, late uh, November, but we actually went through like the drawers, frequently used drawers and, you know, uh, just taking stuff out and throwing out quite a few, uh, just a few bags of stuff that was hovering around. Stuff builds up, especially if you if you have little children around the house. So these are the, are the, the things that I go through regularly to ensure that like, you know, uh, what, what it enables me to do is a win back in, uh, time in my life and my business and to have that extra surplus time uh, to hang out with my family or just to do chilling out stuff and not worry about uh, all that stuff. So house declutter happens twice a year. One big one, as I say, in about late November, early December, as we set up for the Christmas period and the influx, obviously, of Christmas presents and toys and all that kind of stuff, we will require that extra space. But also the second one is a mini one, which either happens Easter or that uh, Queen's birthday weekend. And it's it, it, it shouldn't take, uh, even the massive one doesn't take over. It's probably two, two and a half hours a day over a six or seven day period. And then we we have to skip and we keep uh, filling it up so um, so it gets taken away or put the donations in or whatever it is. All right, number two area that you may want to look into decluttering um, at this time of the year is your email folders, okay? So I hope that um, perhaps you have some kind of filing system in your emails um, and often uh, our email folders can, you know, we might put stuff there but we don't look at it very often but you might be able to get rid of some email folders so they're not fluttering up your space and it's not too hard to find where your categories and subcategories are. So email folders is something that I look at uh, you know, a couple of times a year. And this, that, this one is a super quick one. Like if you want to feel like you've started some kind of a uh, little bit of decluttering in your life, just look at your email folders. It probably only will take you 10 minutes to just look through. Look at it and like I have a pending folder as well and they usually keep stuff there until it gets um, action or the events come around, there's some information for how to get to a place or whatever it is. Then I look at it and I go, okay, I've done, 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 all that. And then I clear, clear that out as well because my inbox always is at zero um, other stuff will get filed away and, or completely deleted out all right the next one is well this one's a little bit um, uh, a, a bigger job but if it's done more regularly uh, or regularly um, then it doesn't have to be as big a job but your computer folders and or Dropbox um, and this one I would probably say I would touch a couple of times a year. Again, probably around the time I'm doing a massive uh, house declutter, I'll kind of, I'm inspired in just clearing stuff out of my space and making more room. So I sit through and like I'll go folder by folder and archive stuff and, and uh, delete stuff out that I just think is just taking up 
room and space that I don't need to. Um, number four is unsubscribing, unsubscribing from certain uh, email database, um, email lists and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this one can ha happen very, very easily. So what I, my strategies is only opt in with my Yahoo email, my personal, like kind of my personal one, nothing to do with the business. Um, and I have got an app called Unroll Me unroll me and that one is connected to my yahoo which means the app actually unsubscribes me from whatever i want like at a click of a button and i'll probably look at that you know two or three times a year um and it's a super quick one another really quick one that you can do um that is um you know, rewarding to feel like, okay, I'm not going to get bombarded by so many emails. And I do that one really, really regularly. And my email inbox in my Yahoo is, um, is hardly, hardly um, overwhelming. As, um, as we know, some people have um, sometimes tens of thousands. And I've met a couple of people who have, photo, have had over 100,000 emails in their inbox, which are sitting there doing absolutely nothing and they'll never get looked at. All right, number five is your apps on your phone. Um, you know, which ones do you use, which ones don't you use? So on my phone, I actually categorize my apps. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of um, app folders, if you like. I like to create app folders, travel, office, health, conference, speaking, social, uh, banking, accounting, business. So I only have a page and a half of apps. Um, I hardly ever have them stand, stand alone on by, by themselves, but they, they can get messy. So I like to categorize them. And then when you recategorize them or you reorganize them, you'll find yourself looking for them all the time because you're not used to where they're positioned because your brain's in a, a certain location. But it's really awesome not have to scroll through five pages and try to look for a certain app because you'll just go, what category is that app in? And boom, then you go to that category. And it's awesome. My kids also do it on their iPads and they, they put away stuff that's like the system, the stuff that I, and then it's nice and clear and decluttered so that's a really good and also quick one to do um and to just kind of go oh my god i have ne never looked at this app and remember deleting apps then it doesn't make them go away forever if you want them they're up in the cloud you'll just bring it back down if you need to use it again at a future date so just just know that there's no point if you haven't looked at something in the last six months all right um Number six is business related. So your business offerings. Um, so do you have too many business offerings? Is there too much stuff that you put out there that you sell and you promote? Um, and my thing over the years, over the last nine years, has been to continue decluttering and figuring out what is it that is taking a lot of effort but not really um, re uh, rewarding back in you know on how I do I like delivering this particular program you know or is there just way too many options that I'm confusing people around what it is that I do and, and offer in the marketplace right so your business offerings are another thing that um, uh, you need to keep looking at and reviewing and you need to continue doing it sometimes people think oh just because I've been doing this for so long I need to keep doing it but is it really serving you or do you love doing it so that's the thing to keep asking yourself every once a year go for the next year you know will I continue doing this particular online program will I do these retreats will I do um, these particular events well where will I go to and who will I hang out with so that's the kind of stuff to really um, work out okay so number seven was what you say yes uh, to that needs to be a no so have you been saying yes to a lot of things this year or the last few months that you need to now start and rewind back to uh, it being uh, more of a no, right? Um, you know, because sometimes we can be become yes, yes, yes people, and that's okay early on in business. But once you become a little bit um, uh, too overwhelmed uh, by so many things on your plate, uh, you need to start decluttering that and figuring out where do you uh, spend 80% of your effort um, that gives you the, 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 the massive results in your business. All right, so number eight is people declutter. Okay, so uh, figure out, is there some people in your life that drain and suck your energy or perhaps um, are tr um, uh, you know, trying to keep you small or you feel criticized by them? Um, you know, uh, do you need to make some decisions where and with whom you'll be spending your uh, most of your time with? And um, number nine is unhealthy habits. So do you have unhealthy habits that you just have 
you know, have been going, I really want to change this. Uh, with unhealthy habits, I would suggest mastering and decluttering and, um, uh, you know, one at a time. And perhaps, you know, being consistent with it over a six month period or longer and then figuring out is there something else. Um, so, you know, with my health and exercise kind of stuff, I have um, refined and uh, added on extra things that I do, um, you know, whether it's around eating, drinking, how. I do exercise, when I do it, how often I do it and all, little increments at a time that, um, you know, it's not like absolutely massive uh, life change instantly, but keep improving um, every step of the way. And then number 10 is time declutter. When is work, when is play time, when is sleep time? So, um, so you know, is it all over the place? If you're a small business owner, um, it can feel all over the place in the early days because you're kind of on uh, almost what feels like 24-7. So as you refine and you have decluttered some of these other areas in your life, how is it that you can uh, declutter your time and actually set up some habits and routines and uh, start and finish times within your schedule, which actually will make you a lot more productive uh, rather, than, uh, rather than working 10, 15 hours uh, a day, uh, use and be productive over a five to seven peri uh, hour period and you will see that actually you can get a lot more done in that um, uh, in that time rather than stretching yourself out and not enjoying yourself because you think all you should be doing is working on your business. So, uh, you know, giving yourself that time to get outside, go for a walk, get some fresh air, do your meditation, uh, cook yourself a healthy meal, all of that sort of stuff will uplift you um, and that's time well spent. Um, so I trust you guys have picked up some little pointers out of this morning's um, live. It was split into two, um, you know, some of the strategies of when we lose our work and how we react and respond and um, and then get ourselves back up to, um, you know, on track with things and also the fact that we are almost approaching that halfway year mark in, and we need to look at decluttering some of our area, some of our physical space, some of our, our, our device and computer space so that we can be more productive. And uh, certainly, actually, another thing I didn't mention is this is also at the time of the year that I would rethink some of my, my systems. Is there a way I can improve them? Actually, what's on my to-do list today um, from the last eight months of having uh, been running my own in-house publishing company on the to-do list is to refine and rewrite my uh, publishing system emails so that uh, they have even more detail from what I've learned since the start of the year when we did them with Viv three months ago. So I'm going to um, sit down with her and go, okay, let's rewrite these emails and resend them to ourselves. So when we do send them to our clients, there's even more detail because we understand them even better now. So have a wonderful week ahead, you guys. Um, uh, uh, smash out some massive goals. We are now properly back. Um, you know, back to school and uh, uh, back after all of those public holidays that we have had over the last three weeks. Uh, it has felt quite a long school holiday uh, period, this one. And um, and we're soon to be entering my birthday month of May, uh, which I'm very excited about. I have planned out a full weekend um, of activities with the family uh, later in May, so I can't wait um, uh, for that. But in the meantime, I've got a shitload of work to do. I'm gonna get prepped by May authors properly and get them all uh, logistically set up and um, and travel out. We're gonna do a mini national tour starting 15th of May with Wollongong and Sydney and then Melbourne and Adelaide, Perth and up to Queensland uh, before then we officially take our media uh, month in Thailand. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Um, go smash out some goals. Stay productive. Go and declutter a few things this week. Um, and um, and then, uh, hey, Zelda, and then we are going to, I'll connect with you again next Monday. If you have any ideas or any questions, any um, things, I'm curious, you know, how does she do this or blah, 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 I'd be happy to create a live around the topic question that you uh, may want to send me through or just make, write the comment on here. And if you enjoy these lives, do feel free uh, to share them. They're already shared in a couple of spots and they'll go up on my YouTube channel. So it's been great to connect again on this Monday morning. Great way to start my week um, as well as hopefully yours as well. All right, guys, have a wonderful week and talk soon. Bye.